There are so many incredible cameras to choose from in 2024. And what's even more exciting is the fact that there's new camera drops coming out almost every day. So why did I decide to buy an FX3 in 2024 after three years of this camera being released? We're gonna compare this camera to the, some of the top cameras to choose from in 2024. We're gonna talk about why this particular camera is so special. And then we're gonna talk about how this camera can completely revolutionize your workflow. Really quickly, I just want to talk about some of the specs and talk about why the FX3 is such a special camera. The FX3 has the ability to shoot 4K up to 120 frames per second. It has a full frame CMOS sensor. It has great autofocus. It's said to have 15 stops of dynamic range. But the most impressive feature of this camera is the ISO performance with a dual native ISO of 800 and 12,800. Now I will say those are some pretty impressive specs, but the question is, how does this camera compare to other cameras in that price range in 2024? In my opinion, a few great options in 2024 are cameras like the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, the Canon R5, the C70, and even the Sony FX30. But when I put the FX3 side by side all these cameras, it just seemed like the best fit for what I needed. You see, for the last six years, I've been shooting exclusively on Blackmagic Cinema cameras. I bought the Blackmagic Cinema camera 6K about six years ago, and when all my gear got stolen, I was forced to get a new camera right around the Ursa 12K's release. And while I've been a huge fan of Blackmagic, and as much as I love the color and the image quality that these cameras produce, I found that they're not the best for running gun situations, especially when you have projects that need a quick turnaround time and situations where you might be shooting in really low light or cram tight spaces. Now, a few months back, I did a video comparing the FX3 versus the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. And because of this video, I got a chance to use the FX3. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I was super skeptical about the hype around the FX3. To me, I always noticed that when I used Sony cameras versus Blackmagic cameras, it always felt like Blackmagic just put out the superior image. But one thing that I noticed when I used this FX3 right away was how user-friendly it was. I didn't know anything about the camera. I never used it before, but I was able to quickly get this up and running and shoot really great footage. The fact that it was really lightweight, even with some additional accessories and attachments, and the fact that it had autofocus and built-in stabilization just made everything I shot really simple and straightforward. And it felt like I was almost using a cheat code. Now, again, I come from the world of black magic where they don't have autofocus, where it is a little bit heavier of a camera. There's no built-in stabilization. And using a camera like the FX3 definitely made me think twice about what B cam I should get for my YouTube channel and other work that I was gonna produce for you know, smaller clients. Now, the one thing that I will say is that while I was doing back-to-back -back image comparisons between the Sony and the Pocket 6K Pro, I noticed that I just gravitated more towards the Blackmagic image a little bit more. Even when I had them mixed up in front of me, I time and time again chose the Blackmagic image over and over again. To me, if you're talking about image quality, it just felt like the Blackmagic has the edge over Sony even with the 6K Pro versus the Sony FX3. Now, in every other department, I think that the FX3 is the better camera. Now, we all know how important getting that image quality is to filmmakers, but what we also know is how important ease of use is, portability, and just overall the fact that this camera can help me achieve some things that the Blackmagic Pocket 6K could never allow me to do. Question still is, why did I decide to buy the FX3, especially now in 2024 when there's a ton of new cameras coming out? As of right now in 2024, the FX3 is the most versatile cinema camera on the market. It's got such a small, tiny, compact body. You could produce great footage out of this camera. And for me, it checked all the boxes that I needed. Again, I'm coming from shooting with the Ursa 12K, which is a big, heavy cinema camera that I need to use on a lot of my higher end projects. But things like my YouTube channel or running gun shoots where I know that I'm primarily gonna be shooting by myself, there is no camera better on the market for solo shooters than the FX3. And when it comes to documentary film work, having the ability to go up to 12,800 in low light situations, you could practically use this camera to see in the dark. And there's been so many times where I have been shooting with my Ursa 12K and I literally just put it down because anytime you bump the ISO past 1600 with the Ursa 12K, the footage just becomes unusable. It's way too grainy. It's just not a good low light camera. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna flood me in the comments and say, the Ursa 12K is not meant for documentaries. It's not meant for running gun filmmaking. It is a cinema camera meant to be on commercials and films. 
I totally understand. I totally get it. Uh-huh. I understand. I think that having the Ursa 12K and then also having the FX3 is a perfect one-two punch for me because when I do need to throw this thing up on a gimbal or when I do need to go out and shoot a running gun documentary where I don't know what kind of a situation that I'm going to be in, the FX3 is going to be able to pretty much allow me to get good quality footage in any situation that I'm going to be in. The other problem that this camera solves for me is the fact that you could shoot compressed file sizes with the FX3, which saves a lot of space and storage, especially when you're shooting long drawn out interviews for more than an hour. This is a perfect camera to do that with. Now, the thing about having this Ursa Mini Pro is the fact that you could only shoot B-roll on this camera. You can't shoot any compressed file sizes. You could shoot at a higher compression rate, but you're still gonna get pretty large file sizes on this camera. I think the FX3 for documentary filmmaking is probably one of the best cameras out there. It's lightweight, it shoots compressed file sizes, extremely versatile, and the high ISOs give this camera the ability to shoot in almost any lighting situation. Creatively, this camera opens up a whole new door for me to be able to go out and shoot documentary style work or even commercial work in low lighting situations. It's hard not to choose to buy this camera in 2024. As much as I think image quality has a lot to do with the camera that you should choose. I do think that taking into consideration of the work that you do as a filmmaker has a lot to do with the camera that you should choose. I mean, for me, just the simple fact of being able to shoot YouTube videos and use this camera and turn on the autofocus and make sure that I'm not gonna be out of focus even if I move front or backwards, this camera's gonna be able to actually rack that focus on its own. It's just one of those little things that allows me to do more as a creator. If I wanna shoot myself on you know, travel films or I just wanna set up a tripod and walk into frame, I can do all of those things with this camera. And then the other big thing is that this camera is so lightweight that throwing it on a gimbal weighs practically nothing and you could run around with this thing for hours on end. I think to me, the FX3 overall unlocks more creative freedom and I'm not one of those YouTubers that are gonna tell you to run out and buy the latest and greatest camera. I think that you guys should definitely take into consideration all the things that I spoke about today, but also think about your workflow as a filmmaker and as a creator or even a YouTuber and see like, what do you need out of your camera? Are you gonna be filming in a lot of low light situations? Do you need something really small? Do you need something compact? Do you usually throw your camera up on a gimbal? If you do, then autofocus and size is gonna be a huge factor for you. Um, do you shoot a lot of handheld stuff? Who are you as a filmmaker? And try to figure out what is the best camera for you. And I always suggest guys to go out and rent before you buy. I don't think you should just blindly buy anything. I definitely think you should use it before you buy it. Now, with all that being said, there was another sneaky little reason why I decided to buy the FX3. And even with all the new rumors of new cameras coming out in 2024, I bought it actually the week before 2023 ended. And I decided to buy it then because I was able to write off about $3,500, $3,600 in taxes. And it definitely helps being able to deduct that from my taxes. But I suggest that if you are to buy an expensive new piece of uh, film gear, you wait to the last minute till the end of the year. So you can actually use that to write that off for your taxes. And if it works out that way, great. But I also think that, you know, try your best not to buy the brand new camera that came out that year, because that's going to be at the height of its cost. In instead, try to see if you could buy that camera used. I've never seen a camera actually break down due to overuse. So I would definitely think about that when you are thinking about buying a new camera in 2024, or even if you're thinking about buying this camera in 2024. I'm not sure if this helps you guys make a decision on this particular camera. I will be doing a more in-depth review as I continue to build my experience with this camera. I kind of just bought it and I'm just now getting used to it. So I'm gonna let you guys know you know, my review after, you know, six months, seven, eight months, and let you guys know if it's still worth it later on this year. But right now, I really do believe that this is one of the best cameras to buy in 2024. And if you guys wanna buy any of this stuff and support the channel, I'm gonna leave some links down below. If you guys buy from those links, that would greatly help me out and help the channel out and allow me to make more content like this. So thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.